ASMR. Hey you guys, uh, today I'm going to be reading some um, true ghost experiences that I found online. Um, just some random ones. Again, like true, like who knows, but um, I'm hoping they're ones that I haven't read before. Uh, I'm currently holding the microphone because it will not stay upright for some reason. Um, but later, I'm going to work on, um, hold on. <laughs> work on getting, um, my green screen back up because Jason, you mentioned wanting some more library videos. And that really makes me feel good because those are my favorite really goofy, stupid ones to make because I really enjoy them. I just haven't made one in a long time because it doesn't seem like a lot of people watch them even though I probably put forth the most effort in those videos. But it's nice that people actually, some people actually like them. So I'm going to rearrange things and see if I can get my green screen back up. So. I'll work on doing some more of those. Okay. Little hands. I've never lived in a haunted house, but my mother did as a teen. Other houses on our street had strange things going on, too. A few homes away from her lived a man and his family. One night, one of his daughters went to bed with a bad headache. The next day she was dead. She'd passed away from an aneurysm. After the funeral, the family went away to get their minds off the tragedy. And the father asked my uncle, my mom's brother, to check on their pets. My mom and dad were dating at the time. They went with my uncle. My mother had heard there was a grand piano and she wanted to play it. And my dad was studying to be a veterinarian. After entering the house, my uncle and my father headed to the basement to see the animals. The Lenore. And my mother went to the piano on the ground floor. And now I gotta pop up. Really? Get out of here, pop up. She was playing it when she felt something brush her ankles. She thought a cat must have left the basement and walked past her. She kept playing, and she felt it again. She looked under the piano and saw nothing. When she started again, she felt hands clasp her legs and grab them tightly. She dashed to the basement door called my uncle and father and waited for them. When they all walked outside, my uncle could tell my mom was rattled and asked what was wrong. She told him what had happened and he turned white. He told her, he told her the daughter who died used to play a game with her father. <clears throat> when he'd play the piano, she'd crawl underneath grab his ankles and push his feet up and down on the pedals. Creepy. The unseen patient. The ambulance company that I used to work for had a haunted ambulance rig 12. A lot of EMTs had stories about it, but I never put much stock in paranormal stuff. That is, until I had my own experience with Rig 12. My partner and I were working in a rural community at 3 a.m. It was pitch dark and completely quiet. We were both dozing. 
was in the driver's seat and she was in the passenger seat. I woke up to a muffled voice and I thought my partner was talking. I told her I was trying to sleep and closed my eyes. I distinctly heard a male voice saying, Oh my God, am I dying? Followed by a few seconds of heavy breathing. My partner and I sat up straight and looked back into the patient compartment where it sounded like the voice had come from. Things were quiet for a couple seconds. Then we heard the click of an oxygen bottle regulator and a hiss as if it was leaking. I turned on the lights and we ran out of the rig. I thought a transient might have climbed in while we were asleep. So we opened the rear doors. No one was there. I checked the oxygen bottles. Neither were opened. We didn't sleep much after that. The impish ghost. My neighbor Diane and I had a playful poltergeist for years, and we called it Billy. I'd come home and find something put in a weird place. Milk in a cupboard, toilet paper in the fridge, laundry detergent in the bathtub. Diane once called to ask if Billy had been around because she couldn't find a gallon of milk. We finally found it outside on her back steps. And sugar, darn sugar. Every morning my sugar bowl was empty. When I had enough, I'd point to Diane's home and yell, Go see Diane. Within five minutes, I'd get a call from her, and she'd say, Thanks a lot. Because he'd gone and pulled shenanigans at her place. This occurred for the entire two years we lived there. No one believed us, not even our husbands. My mother thought someone was stealing from us when we were sleeping or out of the house. My sister believed something was going on, but didn't know what. I still can't explain any of it. You guys, if you hear some random noises in the background, like a weird alarm or... <laughs> sounds like that. Uh, my son is playing video games in his room. I'm sorry. It was either that or not make any ghost videos. The eerie attic. <laughs> and he laughs like Mickey Mouse. It seems so cliche to start by saying, <clears throat> I don't believe in ghosts, but however, that's where I'm coming from. A few years ago, I moved into a one-bedroom apartment in Melbourne, Australia. It was my first time living on my own. The apartment block had been built in the 1930s. I'd been there for a few months when I came home from work one day and went into the bathroom. I saw something strange, the wooden board covering a hole in the ceiling that led to a small attic space laid broken in two pieces on the ground. <laughs> I examined the broken pieces. The board was an inch thick, and it would have taken a Bruce Lee to break it. I thought the landlord had sent someone to work on the attic. I was frozen stiff with fear. I thought someone is up there for sure. I emailed pictures to the landlord asking if anyone had been there with an undertone of annoyance. Since she hadn't warned me, her reply read, please call me as soon as you're able to. I called and she explained that her last two tenants had said the same thing happened. 
she promised to replace the board, and she did. A month later, I woke up one night about 4 a.m. I had so many goosebumps. It felt like someone was rubbing his or her hands on me. Everything was silent. But then I heard this sound coming from my bed. It was a dragging sound like someone pulling a sack of potatoes. I was frozen stiff with fear. I thought someone is up there for sure. There was no way an animal could make that sound. After five minutes, I managed to work up the courage to turn on the light and walk to the bathroom. I was armed with a cricket bat. When I looked, I saw that the new board covering the hole was broken in two. I felt sick. The dragging sound had stopped, but I heard something else, whispering. The sound was clear and coming from the attic. It sounded like children's voices. And I could hear one sentence repeated over and over. It's your turn. It's your turn. I switched on every light in the apartment to make things feel normal. <coughs> it was 5 a.m. and dark outside. I watched TV to try and unwind. Then a fuse blew. My pet, Budgie Dexter, whom I kept in the kitchen, usually never made a sound at night, but he started squawking like he was being strangled. I'd never heard him make those sort of noises. He was screaming. I grabbed my car keys, ran out, sat in my car, and waited there until the sun came up. When I saw people walking their dogs, this comforted me enough to go back in. The front door was open, but I thought I hadn't closed it when I'd run out. I went into the kitchen to check on Dexter, and he wasn't in his cage. I felt sick again. All my windows were closed, so I looked everywhere inside. When I walked to the bathroom, I heard splashing. Dexter was half drowned in the toilet. I took him out, washed him and dried him. I was so confused. At 8 a.m., I called the landlord and gave her a watered-down version of the night. Oh, wow, you heard the whispering, too, she said. I stayed in that apartment for another 18 months. I heard the whispering on a few occasions, and twice the board covering the hole in the ceiling moved. Although I live elsewhere, the landlord recently called. She said that her new tenants had begged to speak to me about some of the stuff that's been going on there. Forget it, it's their problem now. The boy with no eyes. One night when I was ten, I was woken up by my bedroom door opening, followed by someone sitting on my bed. I felt my leg grazed, and the bed sink under a person's weight. Thinking it was my mom, I opened my eyes to see an eyeless boy. He had black, empty sockets. He was about my age, and sitting at the foot of my bed. He extended his hand, and in it was a little box. I was startled, but reached out. He pulled back. I reached again and said, give it. Then I blinked. And when I reopened my eyes, he was gone. But the imprint of someone having sat on my bed was present.
finished, she took a nap while she waited for her parents. When they arrived, I tried waking her up. She opened her eyes suddenly, looking up at a corner where the wall met the ceiling. She pointed there and went back to sleep. I shook her again. She came to full consciousness and explained what she'd done. She sat up on the wall. I saw a little boy with no eyes. He was there in a Spider-Man pose, staring at me. I freaked out and told her my story about the same kid. Fast forward another five years. I was with the same girlfriend and we had a two-year-old. We were living in my parents' house in my old room. My daughter started waking up at the same time every night and she'd talk. After a while, I noticed she had almost the same conversation every night. I playfully asked her once whom she was talking to. She said, it's a little boy. He's nice. He's lost and looking for his mommy. My daughter's nightly conversations continued until we got our own place later that year. Okay, well, that was the last story. <coughs> I'm sorry, this video is uh, short and that you probably heard random sounds in the background. Uh, and I'm also sorry if my voice was a little froggy. I don't know why sometimes chewing gum, whispering, and reading at the same time. Like my throat gets really dry really fast. But yeah, so I am going to work on getting my green screen back up. Um, yeah, I would like to do more ghost um, story type videos. Uh, it's more of a library. eating ones, but I gotta be honest, I don't enjoy those quite as much. I think they're really easy videos to make, and that's probably why I do them. That's my cat. I probably heard her twice, too. Um, yeah, the eating videos um, are super quick and easy to make. I don't have to really think too much about them. Um, but I'd like to do more of the type of ASMR that I like, like gum chewing and got a phone call. Even if it takes me like a long time to get to a thousand subscribers and it takes me a lot longer to, um, get monetized, I'm realizing that if I don't make the videos that I enjoy making, even if it takes, even if they like barely get any views, I'm not going to keep up with the channel if I don't make videos that I enjoy making, so it's whatever. Um, my watch time is decent, my views, not super great. I'm guessing that the same people are watching my stuff over and over again, so thank you. Um, but yeah. Anyway, I'm gonna end this video now, and I'll catch you guys tomorrow.